again, friends, and welcome to the English version of Defense Matrix. Today, we're going to be discussing an important update on the Israel-made Python 5 missile. The Python 5 missile has now been integrated with Global Link SDR, where SDR stands for Software Defined Radio. Now for a quick note on SDRs before we proceed further with the update. SDR can be defined as a wireless communication device, where the receiver and transmitter functionality is modified by software without making any physical changes to the hardware. For this reason, they can receive upgrades by changing the software load, enabling the radio to run multiple waveforms or accept new ones. That will enable the armed forces to acquire new radio technology as it emerges without having to buy additional equipment or start a new program. Anyway, coming back to Python 5, we know that the missile was recently fired successfully from LCA Tejas. Python 5 is a potent 5th generation short-range air-to-air missile with great efficacy. It comes with 360-degree coverage and can even perform a 180-degree maneuver that's making a U-turn to go after the target. It uses imaging infrared, which makes the missile more resistant against countermeasures such as decoys. Now, let's talk a little bit about how software-defined radio could be applied in warfare. Software-defined radio makes tight interconnectivity between aircraft possible, allowing an aircraft to fire a missile even with the radar of the mothership turned off. Instead of using the radar of the mothership, it uses the data from the radar of another aircraft to lock on to the target. Here's an example. Two SDR integrated fighters are chasing an enemy aircraft. Because these aircraft are integrated, one of them can turn off its radar, thus becoming invisible to the enemy aircraft, leading the target to believe that only one aircraft is giving chase. This gives the aircraft with its radio off an element of surprise. Basically, SDR is data link on steroids. Transmission of data and information exchange would be seamless enough to allow a missile to be fired from an alternative path, taking the aircraft on run by surprise. In this case, the missile in question would be the Python 5. One can imagine the application of this technology in beyond visual range combat. It changes the game entirely. A whole formation of fighters will only need a single aircraft with its radar on. Such aircraft could be fitted with more powerful radars exclusively built for this purpose. The Air Force is currently upgrading its airplanes, base stations and ground stations with the Israeli B-Net SDR steadily building up capabilities in network-centric warfare. In fact, the integration of B-Net SDR with the indigenously developed Astra missile could also be on the anvil, boosting overall air power. Additional orders for the B-Net system were recently placed and one can expect the Air Force to go fully network-centric in the near future. The Navy too is equipping its warships with SDR developed by DRDO. The Navy is already using SDRNC and the orders of SDR TAG were recently placed. However, it might look like the Army is a little behind on that road, relatively speaking. The Army is currently looking for a partner in the SDR project. A project sanction order was issued in February 2021 to 18 project vendors to develop prototypes. At this point, the Army, Navy and Air Force are all working on improving their connectivity, but it's not ideal that they appear to be working rather independently of each other. Data linking is all about real-time information sharing. Multiple assets such as ground station radars and AWACS can share information in real time without any human involvement, thus providing enhanced situational awareness. Take for example the F-35 of the United States. We know that the F-35 is a highly capable fighter with powerful sensors. It can not only detect the launch of a ballistic missile from a couple of hundred kilometers away, but can also calculate its trajectory and share such information in real time with a warship armed with anti-ballistic missiles. The warship can then fire its anti-ballistic missiles to intercept the incoming missile based on the trajectory information that it received. In this scenario, both the aircraft and warship communicate and work together seamlessly. However, given that the three divisions of the armed forces are implementing SDR projects separately, it gives rise to a question that we don't yet have an answer to. Will different SDRs with disparate hardware protocols and working frequencies be able to achieve seamless and secure connectivity? We won't be speculating or making any assumptions until we find the answer to this. But if the answer is yes, it appears that we're doing quite well, even if delayed. As more information becomes available and we learn of further developments, we might be able to share an update on this in a future video. But as at this time, we've come to the end of this piece. 
If you have enjoyed this update and would like to see more of these videos being produced, do us a favor and hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel. Jai Hind!